A few of you have asked for it, so here you go. This is the Paragon build video, the top tier 12 Conqueror, at least in the current meta. Let's go ahead and jump into the build. Before we do that, I do want to mention that this is, of course, a PvP video. This is my own build I'm sharing. It's probably similar to a lot of the top builds out there, but I do have a few pretty important differences, and this is not some sort of alliance secret. I'm not even convinced that these exist. I also want to mention that all my builds are available in my build stock, which you can access in the description of any of my YouTube videos. This is brought to you by the channel members and is of course 100% free to use. All you have to do is copy and paste in the Kixi hash code and paste it into your shipyard. Now the Paragon is a pretty interesting ship and it is pretty strong even at U0, it's stronger than the Helmaw and the Hololite at U1. It has a really high amount of armor points which is part of why it is pretty nice and has some decent stats upgrades for U1 including a small increase to armor points, extra ballistic defense which is very helpful against the Pitbulls, increased explosive, helpful against the Dreadhusk, and Corrosive, which I guess is kind of nice. The other stats, including contestive damage, are helpful, but are not necessarily game-breaking. Now, the hull is overall pretty strong. It is pretty weak to Pitbulls at U0, so that U1 upgrade should definitely help, but he is going to be much stronger against concussive defenders like the Horror, which is probably pretty outdated at this point. I actually have to take mine out of my uh, defense once I get another Dreadhusk built. Now this guy does have some okay special abilities, you can see it's Steadfast Screen Aura, basically you get extra damage bonuses if you are stationary, which I suppose is kind of nice, although in most bases you're charging down the channel in any case, but you can use some extra advanced driving to get bonuses when you're stationary. Now, as far as the actual build for this, the weapons are going to be pretty standard. All you want to do is just equip the Claymore Gatling Gun. If you don't have it, go ahead and get it in Bounty for 10,000 points. It should be pretty cheap. I did mention in my Helma video that autoing the 112s was a great way to get a lot of points in this particular Bounty in late November. Now, once those are on there, let's go ahead and jump over to the specials. The first special is your engine. This is going to be nothing too surprising, and I don't really have an alternate for this one. For all the others, I'll suggest some alternates, but the turbocharged engine CT, uh, this is going to give you concussive damage. It's tier 11. It's pretty old at this point, so you probably still have a few of them. Just throw that on there. Extra evade, extra damage, all that stuff is really nice. Special slot number two is going to be Invasion Scanner 3. This is again one that is pretty old and you should have a bunch of them at this point. If you don't, go ahead and scrap your tier 11 ships like your Helios, etc. You won't really be needing those anymore once you build this one, or at least refit this off of that. Let's go ahead and jump into special slot number three, which is the Conquest Battery 2. Using something like Siege Battery or Conquest Battery 1 would not be a bad option here, but most of you probably have enough of this if you're building the Paragorn U1, considering the kits are 20,000 points for 1,000 kits, enough to do all five ships. This one is great. It will double your building damage, actually a little bit more than that, and will give you some combat speed as well. I like it. It is an overall solid choice. Now we're going to start to move into some more specialized specials that are going to be particularly used for the Paragorn instead of something standard for all PvP items. Let's go ahead and put on the Hellbrink Warheads, which is a tier 12 Conqueror special. You can see benefits, explosive damage, we're not using it for that, instead we're using it for the splash and the projectile speed, both of which can make your concussive Gatling Gun tier turn into a pretty powerful special, and I do like this one quite a bit. In fact, this ship does great in building damage, you don't really even need more of that because you do so much of it already. Turrets, etc. die very, very quickly. Where the ship struggles is actually against uh, enemy defending ships, but we'll talk about that when we talk about the CICs because you do have some interesting choices to make there. Special slot number five, let's go ahead and scroll down and look at our list of available options. You're going to see a bunch of them. We're going to come back to one of the uh, concussive reload specials later, but let's go ahead and pull up the Zip Drive X. Zip Drive Y is better, but that it came out with the Badgers and is limited to just that defender, so you can't use that. If you don't have Zip Drive X, it's tier 8 at this point, so you probably do, but just the regular Zip Drive is probably okay. This gives you reload, damage, and combat speed, which are all really nice things. Zip Drive X, overall solid special. I wouldn't see anyone replacing that. 
Now, this final special is where you do have two options in my mind. Some other people are using some other weird things like concussive upgrade or concussive force. Both of those are decent, but really are kind of missing the point because they're not, uh, they're forgetting about this last special. So if I look at concussive damage specials, if I can spell correctly, um, you will see a few different options for these. You'll see force, which is the, uh, right, where's force right here, which is going to give you 15% more damage, but you lose a bunch of range, but potentially putting you under the range of defending pit bulls, which is not great, especially if you can hit them when they're stationary. You also have the option for scope, which is one of the two options in my mind for this one. Extra range is always helpful, and you probably do enough damage to buildings, but ships, again, is where you struggle some from. A bunch of people are putting on concussive upgrade, and that's great if you don't remember the last special, which is actually the PBX payload special. What this does is gives you extra critical damage, an extra 20% is, or critical chance rather, an extra 20% is really, really nice. It means about 32% of your crits with R&D are going to actually be critical, assuming it stacks, which is my understanding that it does. This is effectively a 20% damage boost at no cost to your range, at no cost to your reload, or anything like that. And you might say that, oh yeah, you're relying on criticals, you're hoping that those are successful. Well, it turns out, um, they're going to be because you have so many different salvos you're firing so quickly. It's, it's the law of large numbers. You're going to have, on average, 20% or very, very close to that critical throughout the entire battle. You don't need to be skeptical of, of the math behind random numbers on this particular special. What this means is that this is your overall build for your specials and stuff like that. I could see a little bit of an argument for trying to put in an evade special there, Agility System 4 or something instead of PBX Payload, but I'm not quite convinced on that one at this point. There's not a ton of stuff that's accuracy based, and even if a lot of stuff is, you still have a bunch of splash things in the base to deal with, and if you kill them qu more quickly, then you don't have to defend against them. Notice the build time right here is 10 days, 10 hours. So let's talk about CICs now. So moving over to the first CIC slot right here, uh, this is the one that came out with the ship, and this is the one that most of you are going to be using, the Dauntless CIC. Notice the build time is just about a day, so it does take time to put on the regular one that came out with the ship that you all have just by default here. This gives you 10% defenses, which is nice, and some building damage and stuff like that, as well as some reload, which you don't really need because you already have that pretty high, although I'll just take an extra 3%, why not? Um, what this is doing is this is just straight up increasing your building damage. The Dauntless CIC you can think of as the increased building damage CIC. It's overall a pretty good one and you should probably use that on three or four of your Paragorns if you're running a fleet of five. Now, I do want to talk about the CICs that came out in Bounty and are probably available there. Maybe Pillage, we'll have to see. And these are ones that actually I still need to pick up from the Raid, and they need to be equipped to a U1 Paragorn, which you should upgrade anyway because it makes it a whole lot better. But the two options are firstly the Mirror Shroud CIC, and this is the Tank CIC. This is going to give you 5% higher defenses across the board, which is a very, very small number because you're already at 10%. So going from 10 to 15 is really, really small in my mind, not necessarily worth it. And this will reduce your building damage by 40%. I'm not entirely sure how that math works out on this one. You can see that I have a plus building damage on the ship already that's really, really high. And at first I was thinking that, okay, great, this doesn't matter. I'm already doing a ton of damage. I don't need to take... Um, I don't want to reduce that. Well, after hitting a bunch of bases with my Paragorns recently, I have kind of seen that I'm killing I'm killing turrets really, really fast. I'm killing gates and stuff like that really, really quickly. Therefore, I can actually, I'm okay losing some building damage. So based on the fact that you're going to have five ships in the fleet, you can have contagions behind a tank or whatever, I think the Mirror Shroud CIC has some potential for it to be worth it. However, without actually having tested it in detail myself, I can't recommend this one because you're just losing, losing so much damage in comparison to the regular one. But if you want to run a tank ship, go ahead and go for it. Personally, I think there are some better ships to tank against, and I have a chart that might be the subject of a future video, which I might show later. Now let's go ahead and look at your third option, which is the Battle Fervor CIC. What you can see is that this actually reduces your defenses from 10% to 5%, which okay is a pretty small effect. 
but what this does is it also reduces your building damage and at the same time increases your concussive damage. You're essentially trading damage against buildings for damage against ships, which as I mentioned is exactly what the Paragorn struggles with, or Paragon I suppose. I actually would recommend putting this on at least one of your of your ships, if not more, because it is going to do a ton of damage against ships. You can kill Pipples more quickly, you can kill Dreghus more quickly, and both of those are going to be really important for attacking bases. So, in, especially in bases that are pretty spread out and you can choose what ship hits what particular area with some good driving, this is actually going to be a pretty good option. I would recommend at least one of these in every single fleet. Now, actually, I mentioned that the build time earlier was 10 days and 10 hours for the ship without the CIC. It turns out that that's the same for equipping the CIC on here, and you can see the damage dropped from 550 something to 340, which is as expected. In any case, um, what you're seeing is that it's instant refit between the add on the Battle Fervor CIC and the Mirror Shroud CIC. You can put them on, switch them out for free as long as you have your shipyard open, so it's worth testing a few times. Unfortunately, you can't currently go back and equip the U0 CIC that came out with the ship for free, so that is something to be aware of. In the build, I'm going to put on my Kixi hash code on my build stock. I'm going to have the regular U0 CIC, but I do want to keep these two as an option, especially that you know that you can take one ship, play around, put this on, take it off, see if it's worth it for you to lose a bunch of building damage, but add back on concussive damage, which helps against both ships and buildings. Now, finally, in terms of the armors, you're going to want to put on things that this ship is generally weak against. You might think from looking at the defenses that this ship is going to be weak against explosive, which it is with the Dreadhusk. Although I should note that the Dreadhusk has a 25% uh, concussive defense, so it's roughly even between the Dreadhusk and the Paragorn. You'd also put on some corrosive for uh, going against the Mind Melter Scatter Gun, which I think is a pretty good overall bet because there's not a ton of other defensive items that are going to really, really hurt you. Maybe some missiles or something like that. But until we get that iconic Railgun turret released, which is going to be ballistic, we don't have much else hurting us. And some people are even running like tier 8 turrets or something in their bases that are really, really low. Now for the last armor, you can either really do explosive like I talked about, or you can use a ballistic one, and ballistic should help against the Pipple, which is obviously one of this hole's main weaknesses, and with the U1 and the armor, it should be much, much, much less of a threat. And uh, this will obviously help too against the iconic railgun when it comes out. As far as I know, every single railgun we've had in the game has been ballistic. This was kind of teased in the bounty prizes, if you don't remember that one. And that is my overall thought on my build for the Paragorn, probably a fleet of five of these things, unless you're running a mixed fleet with Contagions, and then you have a few differences. Uh, three regular CICs, one tank CIC, and one damage CIC, maybe two ship damage CICs. That's my thought. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. I want to give a huge thank you to the channel members whose names appear on the end screen now. They're helping keep the channel running and are why I can provide things like the build stock. If you find that doc or these videos helpful and want to support, you can click the join button on YouTube. As always, and until next time, this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.